The National Biscuit Company presents The Adventures of Bryn Tin Tin. Yo, Renny! Bryn Tin Tin, Bryn Tin Tin, Bryn Tin Tin, Bryn Tin Tin is brought to you by shredded wheat and oat fondue. Bryn and Rusty side by side, loyal, heroic, the regiment's pride. Action, drama, you'll find them in the thrilling adventures of Bryn Tin Tin. The National Biscuit Company presents this week's adventure of Rin Tin Tin. Okay, Rinny, here I come. <laughs> wow, you know, keeping up with Rin Tin Tin is a real man-sized job. Now tell me, Rusty, just how do you do it? Well, sir, every morning I have me a man-sized breakfast, Nabisco shredded wheat. And boy, is Nabisco shredded wheat ever fun to eat. It looks just like a raft in your milk. Oh, you're so right. And believe me, those rafts of Nabisco shredded wheat are just loaded with energy. The energy you need to keep you on the go all day long. In fact, everybody needs the raft of energy in Nabisco shredded wheat. Besides all that energy, Nabisco shredded wheat tastes so good. Crunchy and everything. So be like me. Every morning, sail a raft of Nabisco shredded wheat into your breakfast bowl. Kids, just ask Mom to get you the package with Niagara Falls on the end. And then you're sure that you're eating the kind that Rusty eats. Nabisco, the original shredded wheat. And now, back to the adventures of Rin Tin Tin. Lieutenant Rip Masters speaking. Officer of the 101st Cavalry stationed at Fort Apache. We're known as the Fighting Blue Devils. As you all know, soldiers are called upon at a moment's notice to perform all sorts of duties. And at times, if necessary, even to risk their lives. So we're prepared for anything, always on the alert, night and day. I can give you a good example of what I'm talking about. Fort Apache had settled down for a good night's sleep when a special courier arrived. I was immediately summoned to Major Swanson's office. Except for the sentries, Sergeant O'Hara and myself, the rest of the post was deep in slumber. But Rusty and Rennie were awake, although they weren't supposed to be. Gee, Rennie, something's up all right. Rip one of the Major's quarters right after that courier arrived. <laughs> Even Sergeant O'Hara got called to the Major's office. It all looks kind of hush-hush. I know something big is going on, but we probably won't know what it is till it's all over. Rusty. What is it, Biff? Lieutenant Master sends his respects and requests that you fall out at the stables in full uniform in five minutes. Gosh, what's it all about? Search me, top secret. Is the troop moving out? Nope, just Major Swanson, Lieutenant Masters, and you. Huh? Rip and the Major and me? And Rennie. Now hop to it, soldier. Gosh. <laughs> okay, I am hurrying. <laughs> Sir, when do I find out where we're going? When we get there, Rusty. What are we going to do? This is your first secret mission, Rusty. So remember this. The Army often gives orders without explaining them. And a soldier follows orders without questioning them. Yes, sir. There's the rendezvous point, sir. San Juan de la Cruz. Well, Corporal, now you know where. The old mission. But I still don't know why. We're meeting Lieutenant Sharp. Army intelligence. Oh, oh boy. Oh, 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 oh. Thanks for coming, Major Swanson. Uh, you know Lieutenant Masters and Honorary Corporal Rusty. Of course. That's why I'm here. Hello, Rip. Good to see you, Sharp. Hello, Rusty. Hello, sir. Lieutenant. I told them all about you and Rennie in Washington. Gosh. You hear that, Rennie? <laughs> Suppose you let us in on the secret now, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. I'll make it brief. The United States is about to sign a treaty for aid to Mexico. Our ambassador is on his way to Mexico now to meet President Diaz. When this treaty is signed, it'll knock the props out from under Don Cortez and his phony revolution. Then he won't have any more reasons to raid and steal. Exactly, sir. So Don Cortez may try to stop the ambassador from getting through. Well, why not send a decoy on the obvious route and send the ambassador another way? Well, I'm glad you're on our side, Lieutenant, because that's the plan. You see, over there? Yes? That's the decoy stagecoach, Rip. 
And you're the decoy ambassador. Hey. Well, I never thought I'd wind up in the diplomatic service. When do I leave? As soon as we complete your disguise. How much does Don Cortez know about the ambassador? Only that he's traveling with his family, sir. Oh. Thought I heard a girl's voice over there. She is Miss Curtis, the loyal Mexican. She volunteered to act as the wife. To complete the family picture, we need a boy and a dog. Then can they really volunteer, sir? Oh, just a minute. Before you volunteer, let me explain. Intelligence has to eliminate every risk. Our troops will escort the coach to the border. Then a Mexican guard will take it the rest of the way. As far as we figure, there's no real danger. But uh, something could go wrong, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. There's always that chance. Sir? Rusty, you have to think of this for Rennie as well as yourself. Sir? Me and Rennie volunteer. <laughs> That we are, Rusty. I hope it all works out well, Lieutenant. Well, I must say you've convinced me of one thing, Miss Curtis. What is that, Lieutenant? When I decide to take marriage seriously, I'm certainly going to let the Army choose my wife. I hope she will have as good reason to be your wife as I have to act the part. Oh, yes, I hope so. Hey, we're coming to a stop, Rick. I guess we're almost to the border, Rusty. We should be there by now. We're at the border. Here's where I leave you. Good luck, Rick. Miss Curtis. Corporal, be a good soldier. Yes, sir. Masters, you move off as soon as I confer with the Mexican officer and his men. Right, Sharp. Take care of yourselves. Capitan Fernando Gonzalez, your service, senor. I'm Lieutenant Sharp. United States Army Intelligence. My pleasure, senor. Do you think you have enough men, Captain? Enough to take care of your ambassador and his family. All right, Captain. Carry on. Drivers, get moving! trained as our soldiers, perhaps. But they're good men, Rusty. Hey, Rip, we're slowing down. What's the matter? I don't know. Miss Curtis, would you know of any reason for stopping here? I have no idea, Lieutenant, really. Well, we've stopped. I don't know what could be wrong. The captain's coming over, Rip. Yes. Relax. My ambassador friend. What's the trouble, Captain? No trouble. You are sensible, Senor Ambassador. You are the prisoners of Don Cortez. Huh? <laughs> Too bad. Your driver did not show more discretion. Ready, ready! Trusty, hold it! Stay ready, here. Ready. You die! Rusty, be still. I can't, I can't. You have to, Rusty. I have to go back to Rennie. Please, Rip. There's nothing you can do for him now. Put yourself together. Now, that's an order, soldier. Rennie! Rennie took his chances back there, same as we did at the start of this mission. He got him so shot, waiting for us. That's why we have to make sure he didn't do it for nothing. But, well, what can we do now? We're prisoners. The longer these bandits think they have the ambassador, the longer the ambassador has to reach Mexico City. Yeah, I guess that's right, Rip. We just have to stick to our job, Rusty. Isn't that right, Miss Curtis? I believe that is the idea, Lieutenant Masters. But, but well, Rennie is laying back there, dying, Rip. Rennie was a great and good soldier, Rusty. Yeah, but... He did his duty as he saw it, like all fine soldiers must. I know, Rip, but we didn't even try to help In him. In battle, you aren't always able to help, Rusty. Yeah, I, I guess you're right, Rip, but you're going to miss him. I know, Rusty. I know. He, he was my buddy. You're forgetting one thing, Corporal. What? We have to help the ambassador reach Mexico City, alive. That was our assignment, Rusty. Yes, sir. We'll make it okay, Rip, won't we? I hope so, Rusty. From now on, things are going to get tougher. In fact, very tough. Yes, sir. 
We're prisoners, all right. Well, now you know what Don Cortez is like. Don Cortez? That man was not Don Cortez. He wasn't Don Cortez? How do you know, Miss Curtis? Because Don Cortez is my brother. The stagecoach rumbled on mile after mile. The three of us sat inside in silence. Miss Curtis's information had stunned both Rusty and myself. It appeared that we had played right into the hands of the bandit outlaw, Don Cortez. And it certainly seemed that Miss Curtis was an accomplice. I was so angry I could hardly contain myself. And yet I couldn't bring myself to speak to the attractive young woman on the seat opposite me. All of a sudden, I found words. So did Rusty. But, Miss Curtis, I just don't understand. There's one thing I don't get, Miss Curtis, or Cortez. Yes? These men still act as if they think I'm the ambassador. Is that not what they are supposed to think? Not since you've undoubtedly told Don Cortez the ambassador took another route. I have not talked to my brother in over a year. I want this treaty to go through. I volunteered for this job to make up for some of my brother's wrongs. Then I hope you know what you've done. I do not understand. The minute Don Cortez sees you, he'll know I'm not the ambassador. In a way, it didn't really matter what motive Miss Curtis or Cortez had. She did manage to place us in an extremely dangerous position. But more importantly, she was endangering the life of an ambassador of the United States. For the moment Don Cortez discovered our ruse, he would spare no effort to hunt down and perhaps destroy the ambassador. I'll be back in a minute to tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> Say, what's going on here? Oh, that's King. He belongs to a friend of mine. Well, it looks like King can do a lot of tricks, just like Rin Tin Tin can. He sure can, because Billy trained him with milk bone dog biscuits, just like I trained Rinny. Do you mean that every time King learns a trick, Billy gives him milk bone dog biscuit as a reward? Yep. It was easy to train him that way. He obeys, too. He really likes Milk Bone. But you know, Rusty, and you kids listening in, too, Milk Bone dog biscuits do more for your dog than just making training easier. It's good for his health, too. Right. Milk Bone is packed with proteins, mineral, and vitamins and has more energy per pound than beefsteak. You could feed your dog nothing else and he'd thrive. So why don't all you kids listening do what Rusty and Billy do? Feed your dog Nabisco Milk Bone dog biscuits in the yellow and red box. It comes in three bone sizes, small, medium, or large. Your dog will love milk bone. And now, back to the adventures of Rin Tin Tin. Lieutenant Rip Masters again. There wasn't anything we could do except to believe Miss Curtis's story that she was trying to make up for her brother's wrongs. Her brother, the powerful outlaw bandit, Don Cortez. All we could do was to wait and see. After all, we were captives. We didn't have to wait too long. After another hour of fast traveling, our stagecoach rolled into the stronghold of Don Cortez and came to a stop in a tiny square. We were ordered out of the coach. And now, Senor Ambassador, you shall meet Don Cortez. One minute. It's been a long trip. My wife is very tired. She needs rest. Come, Senor. Really, this is highly improper. She will have much time for rest, Senor. Later. I insist. Senor, you see this knife? You still insist? Lead the way. Good. You can be reasonable, Senor. Miss Curtis. Yes? That veil on your hat, quick. Cover your face with it. All right. Keep your face hidden. Don't talk. Doc! Open the door! Go inside and down the steps, Senor Ambassador. Senor, see the gentleman and his two friends in chains? No. Senor Ambassador, <laughs> I present to you safely contained by chains. Don Cortez? Don. What? 
Enjoy your stay, say your ambassador. We're a stronger day. Don Cortez, you're a prisoner too? I have never been anything else here. Don Maria. Oh, my brother. Oh, how can you ever forgive me? Forgive you, Maria. You, for, for listening to all those terrible lies about you. It is Miguel Sanchez's favorite joke. <gasps> the reputation he has earned for me. But how? Why? Oh, it is simple. I have always been known to Mexico as a patriot. My movement for land reform built a large following. More and more people joined me. Among them, Miguel Sanchez and his men. Oh, Don. Then, Don. behind my back, using my name and the principles of my cause, Sanchez made his raids. I learned of his raids when people began to drop away from me. Disillusioned in me. Oh, Don. Go on, sir. When I, when I challenged Sanchez, he made me a prisoner. And continued his thieving in my name. Oh, my brother. You have suffered so. But, Maria... How, uh, how did you get here? I will... I will let Lieutenant Masters explain. These two men with you, do they speak English? Oh, si, si, but they are loyal friends. Juan Hernandez and Arturo Vallejo. You may speak freely. All right. Come closer, amigos. And so I set about explaining to Don Cortez our plans and what had happened to us. There was a part of the story I left out because I didn't know it. Rin Tin Tin had only been stunned by the bullet which hit him. And at that very moment, he was on our trail. But he was being very careful not to be seen. It was a good thing because a messenger on his way to Sanchez was traveling the same road. Rennie crouched in the brush until the rider was out of sight. Then he set out on the trail again. A short time later, that same messenger reined up in front of the dungeon where we were being held. And he handed a letter to Sanchez, who quickly opened it. Ha! Gah! Open the door! We wish to see our prisoners. I have news for our guests. Amigos, I'm about to order your last meal. This time you go too far, Sanchez. The United States government will not accept the murder of its ambassador lightly. You are for liar, Don Cortez. Lieutenant, I have just warned the ambassador has already arrived in Mexico City. Mission accomplished, Rusty. Yeah, Rip. Sanchez, that treaty provides arms for a Mexican army big enough to blast you out of business. You're finished. Except that I too have tricks, senor. I shall see that your death is blamed on that terrible bandito, Don Cortez. Oh, no. Then I become a national hero. For I, single-handed, will capture and kill notorious Don Cortez. <laughs> I hope I have not spoiled your appetite for the feast I'm sending you. <laughs> No use, Rusty. We'll never get out through that door. One more try, Rip. No use, Rusty. Got to think of something else. It's ready. Rusty, there are probably other dogs around here. No, Rip. I know ready when I hear them. Well, here comes our last meal. There must be something we can do. Has to be something. Hey! I'll get him. Good work, Rennie. 
me. Rusty, get his key and release Don Cortez and his men. Yes, sir. Lieutenant, do you see? I that... think we can get out of here. We are free, senor. Come on. Wait a minute. Wait. I want to have a look around. We're in luck. They haven't unharnessed the coach. Don, do you know where they keep the horses? See, si. These people who used to follow you. Can we round up enough of them to give Sanchez a fight? Oh, see, si. If I have a chance to explain to them... Good. Fernandez, Vallejo, you'll take care of Rusty and Miss Curtis. We'll hide them near the coach. Then, Don, you and I'll get the horses and head south. We'll make our escape obvious. Get them to chase us. As soon as the camp is clear, grab the coach, head north for the border. I'll meet you there. Everything clear? Now, we'll head for the horses. You head for the coach. Come on, Miss Curtis. We're going to the coach. All right. Nobody's seen us yet. So far, so good. Only Don and the lieutenant can just... They'll get the horses all right. There goes Rip and Don. Come on, Miss Curtis, into the stagecoach. One in Arturo, you drive. Well, you ride in here, Rennie. Okay, Juan, let's go. Americano and Don Cortez. They could not have gone this way, Pedro. It is better we go back. We can't stand make terms while we have the woman and the boy. Amigos, we like. Hiding place in the rocks just above them, Don Cortez and I watched Sanchez and his bandits head back for town. Then the two of us rode on to gather Don Cortez's friends so we could fight the outlaws. While we were doing this, Sanchez and his men arrived back at their hideaway to discover that Rusty and Miss Curtis had made off in the stagecoach. They had taken the stagecoach. They had to head for the border. And they would have to take the road. We can cut through the mountains. Oh, don't worry, man. We must be pretty close to the border now. Oh, oh, oh. Banditos are running. Without a leader, they're nothing. Oh, Lieutenant, how can I thank you? Well, you better thank Rin Tin Tin, Miss Cortez. <laughs> wow, I guess the mission's really accomplished this yes, time. Yes, Rusty. Oh, 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 oh. On behalf of the Republic of Mexico... It is my great honor to have been selected by El Presidente Diaz to come to Fort Apache to present my country's highest honor for bravery. To three gallant Americanos, I bring these medals. Lieutenant Ripley Masters. 
Thank you. Corporal Rusty B. Company. Thank you, Don. I mean, sir. <laughs> See, it is good. Private Rintintin. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the lieutenant, the boy I could handle. But will somebody show me how I can pin this medal on the door? <laughs> 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 Let's listen as Rusty rehearses Rennie for his adventures. Pretend that you're wrestling with a bad Indian, Rennie. Good boy. Now you're supposed to warn the fort of an attack. Okay, Rennie, you've earned your milk bone. Ah, so that's your training secret, Rusty. Milk bone. It sure helps, Mr. Morrow. Rennie learns tricks faster when milk bone's the reward. Is that the only time he has it? Oh, no. Well, Rennie gets milk bone for breakfast sometimes and for snacks, too. But how do you suppose he keeps that nice silky coat and strong teeth? Good point, Rusty. You see, Milk Bone is packed with proteins, mineral, and vitamins, and more energy per pound than prime beefsteak. So, for easier training, for minor meals or snacks, give your dog what Rennie eats, Milk Bone. <coughs> right, Rennie. Milk Bone dog biscuits come small, medium, and large in just the right size to suit your dog. Just look for the red and yellow box that says Milk Bone. <coughs> We couldn't help feeling a little proud, all of us. It was good to serve your country well. Know you'd done a good job. And it was some time before we could get Rusty to stop wearing his medal all the time, even on his pajamas. But Sergeant O'Hara finally kitted him out of it. Naturally, Sergeant O'Hara knew that a soldier wasn't supposed to wear his medals all the time. And that's why he kitted Rusty out of wearing the medal. Still, I think Biff O'Hara had another reason. But how come we got to go all the way to Mesa Grande, O'Hara, to pick the new army uniforms? Because ordnance shipped them by rail, and there's no train to Salt River. Will we get there in time to hear the big speech? Maybe. What's the big speech all about? Oh, just politics. What are politics all about? Who knows? <laughs> you ain't going to wear that medal in town, are you? Huh? Well, why not? You just don't do it in the Army, Rusty, that's all. Oh, well, what'll I do with it? Well, I'll take care of it for you. Okay, here it is. Now, that's being a good soldier. Hey, you're pinning it on yourself. Well, that's the best place for me to keep it for you. Oh, you're just trying to wear my medal. Oh, 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 oh. well, sure, I'm just wearing it. Why, Rusty, I'm not doing anything of the kind. I Give me back my medal. Oh, oh, oh. oh all right, here's your medal. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Don't forget next Sunday at this same time over this station, another exciting chapter in The Adventures of Rin Tin Tin, presented by the National Biscuit Company, makers of Milk Bone Dog Biscuits and Nabisco, the original shredded wheat. For The Adventures of Rin Tin Tin on television, consult your local paper for time and station. This is Don Morrow speaking, and this program came to you transcribed from New York.